Stephen Kraft. I live in Rochester, New York, and I play house music. Uh, I've been DJing since probably 1999, 1998, I would say. I started DJing high school dances with one of my pals, and we were playing some danceable tunes by the end of the night. House music for me, um, I guess was a pretty natural evolution. I had been into this electronic music radio show in the UK when I was probably 15 called Pirate Radio. Um, and they played drum and bass and jungle. I didn't actually even know what the genres were at that time. But I, there was something about this electronic music that was um, really engaging me. And at the same time, I met a fellow who was um, one of my good friend's cousins. He was like probably around 30 years old. And he, uh, he was a DJ in Boston where I grew up. And, uh, he had a house music radio show late night on the weekends and in talking to him and listening to his show I was exposed to a lot more of these soulful deep house sounds. I didn't really again know what they were and um, in talking to him, his name's Giles Dickerson, um, Giles told me to go to this record shop in Boston called Boston Beat and to pick up a record called Blaze Productions, 12-inch LP uh, on Playhouse. So I went to this record shop and I bought the record, I special ordered it, and um, it was a game changer for me. It was the first record I bought uh, and uh, it set the tone for a lot of the future uh, sound that ended up being uh, so influential to me. And that was probably one of the biggest sparks for getting me excited about that house music sound. So as far as house music influences go, there was one release that was of particular note uh, that really um, resonated with me so deeply, and that was the annual release by Ministry of Sound in the year 99 or 2000, um, mixed by Judge Jules. Wow, oh my God, it was so tremendous. It opened up with this like nine minute David Morales piano track and it was all of these amazing UK funky house tracks. Um, Kevin Fisher, um, You Got Me Burning Up, Pete Heller's Big Love, a lot of really cheesy stuff. It was really happy. It had a lot of movement, and um, that particular release was particularly noteworthy um, in helping influence me um, in the early days. And uh, after that, um, I really fell in love with uh, Ian Pooley. Um, how I found these releases um, changed. So that that CD, the Ministry of Sound Annual 99 or whatever, was in a CD drive of a computer at a lab in my high school. I found it there. And uh, then I started going to record stores at some point in the Boston area. And then occasionally, uh, even before I went to college, I would go to New York City and hit the record stores um, in the village and the Lower East Side. And um, I would just ask the people who worked at the record shop if they could show me what was getting released in house or, or whatever. And then I would go through piles and piles and piles of vinyl. And I didn't know who any of the artists were. I didn't really understand even a lot about labels, but I just listened. And when I found something that spoke to me, I would take it home. Sulfuric Records was um, was big for me. Subliminal Records back in the early 2000s was also really uh, important for me. Jose Nunez, um, it wasn't a digital world at that point. It was um, 
really a record store culture that was influencing me. And then occasionally if I went out and I heard somebody play something, I would ask them what that record was and they would sometimes show me. There was this little place in Boston called Hibernia um, that wasn't really a house music club, but Tim Ryan, who was a huge Boston legendary DJ, uh, had this little event at Hibernia. And a good friend of mine, Kevin Sistrom, introduced me to Tim Ryan and Hibernia. And he used to have uh, this residency there that was fantastic. It was a very small, dark room, and people would go and dance. And I remember him playing um, Underworld two months off. And uh, I later got that vinyl after I heard him play that there. My involvement in the house music scene today is uh, a lot different than it used to be. I'm not going out to clubs and I'm not following DJ charts and I don't um, actually have a really strong community here in Rochester of um, people who are really diving deeply into music. So it's sort of become something for me where um, there are a couple of online resources that I follow where there are particular characters who release mixes or, um, or productions that I think are particularly tasteful and I listen to them because I love them. And uh, then I have a few friends um, who live outside of town with whom I'll occasionally share, you know, favorite releases and we'll sort of talk to each other about what's been um, moving us as of late. Then I actually these days have been getting to play out more than I used to, which has really been lovely for me. And the environments in which I'm playing are really, um, really laid back. So I'm getting to play music that I love. Sometimes it's not always house, sometimes it's disco or soul or funk, um, but it's always got some some really beautiful character and, I, and I've been playing out here in Rochester um, twice a month at two different places and um, it's been really great to just get to share that music and these vibes with people and, um, and it's a, both of the settings are really personal so I get a lot of feedback from people talking to me about how they they feel about the tunes, which is for me what it's all about. You know, it's um, house music has become a medium through which I can communicate with people and share uh, a specific energy, and it's been really, really lovely. You know, when I showed up here in 2002, I remember going out to a number of different clubs where people were playing house music on turntables, you know, with vinyl records. And people showed up and danced, and by 2006 or seven, it was not as natural. And the people who were sharing that DJ scene, I think were starting to have to try harder or push more, it, to me, didn't feel quite as natural. Here and there, I occasionally will attend an event. I actually just went to an event two nights ago at Club Love um, in Rochester, which was different than what I ever had expected. Um, but people were dancing and the music was really good. So there's James Revival, DJ an all vinyl set, followed by, I heard, Jim Kempkes, who's a Rochester DJ. Fantastic. So to me, that was a, a very pleasant surprise. Uh, but in general, I feel like the scene is not as strong as obviously it is in Brooklyn or uh, San Francisco where I've experienced so many beautiful people out really feeling the music in a, in a big way. The people who are doing it really care and that to me is what, it, what really makes it so special. And so people who want to play house music usually end up having to be uh, wearing two hats. They're a DJ, but they're also uh, usually required to be a strong promoter or be part of a promotional team. And so often there seems to me to often be this compromise where people aren't playing something maybe as soulful 
uh, or as true to the sound as they want so that they can um, accommodate what the people who are running these venues want to have, which is people buying drinks. One record that I just love to throw down is um, something I got at Satellite Records in New York City, maybe 2003. It's Ian Pooley, Missing You. It is a super uplifting, funky house track, and it just is a destroyer. I, it's rare that that record will go, go play and people will not be dancing. Oh yeah, another early time in the night kind of deep, trippy track that I really love is um, Deep Dish doing a remix of a track called The Dream. It's exquisite. Um, definitely a favorite. I really love to play that track. Have I ever DJed in Buffalo? I don't think I have. No, I have not DJed in Buffalo. This will be the, the first time. Yeah, I'm, I'm definitely excited. I've gone to a couple of parties in Buffalo. People are always getting down, which is what it's about for me, you know? That, that dance element is so big, and um, the energy that I've gotten from you, Pat Split, and from Lydia, and the other characters that, I, that I've met there have been really positive, so I'm totally pumped about getting to play, and it's an honor, so thank you.